Kenya had a big problem in the 1980s with the first ever Kenyan made car. The economy was booming, 20 shillings was equal to 1 pound. There was no VAT and life was generally good, but a lot of our money was going to Japan and Europe through the importation of cars. The then President Moi didn't appreciate this direction of the country. President Moi was also challenged by the Malaysian government, which in collaboration with the Mitsubishi Motors, embarked on the development of the now successful Proton Motors. Imagine a time when Kenya dreamed of building its own cars, a symbol of innovation and independence in a world dominated by foreign imports. The Nyayo Car Project promised to transform this vision into reality. But what started as a bold leap towards self-sufficiency quickly spiraled into a tale of ambition, political interference and ultimate failure. Join us as we unravel the story of the Nyayo Car. A journey that reflects both the hopes and challenges of a nation striving to carve its place in the automotive industry. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a fascinating chapter of Kenya's history, the Nyayo car. This ambitious project aimed to put Kenya on the map as an automobile manufacturing nation. What will happen to this dream? Let's find out. In the mid-1980s, under President Daniel Arap Moy's leadership, Kenya embarked on a bold initiative to create its own car. The Nyayo Car Project was launched in 1986, inspired by Malaysia's successful launch of the program. At that time, most cars on Kenyan roads were imported from Japan and Europe and the government sought to establish a local manufacturing industry that could produce vehicles tailored to the needs of Kenyans. This initiative was not just about creating a car, it was about fostering national pride and economic independence. The name Nyayo means footsteps in Swahili, symbolizing the government's commitment to follow in the footsteps of successful nations. The project aimed not only to manufacture cars, but also to promote local industry and create jobs. The vision was grand, a driving automotive sector that could contribute significantly to the economy and provide employment for thousands. The University of Nairobi was tasked to designing the vehicles, leading to the creation of five prototypes known as the Pioneer Nyayo cars. These prototypes were designed with performance in mind, capable of reaching speeds of up to 120 km per hour, and showcased innovative engineering for their time. President Moy asked the University of Nairobi Engineering Department to develop the vehicles of which five prototypes were made and named Pioneer Nyayo cars. The cars attained a speed of 120 km per hour, and as a result, the Nyayo Motor Corporation was established to mass produce the cars. However, due to lack of funds, the cars never entered into production. So, what were the main objectives behind the Nyayo car project? First and foremost, it aimed for local manufacturing by producing cars using locally sourced materials. This will not only save foreign exchange but also stimulate local industries and suppliers. The government believed that if Kenyans could build their own cars, it would encourage innovation and entrepreneurship within the country. Secondly, it sought economic independence by reducing reliance on foreign imports, which could be vulnerable to global market fluctuations. By producing cars locally, Kenya could stabilize its economy and create a more resilient automotive sector. Job creation was another significant goal. The project promised to generate employment opportunities within Kenya, thereby contributing to national development. In a country where unemployment rates were high, particularly among the youth, the promise of jobs in manufacturing was particularly appealing. 
The Nyeka project was seen as a beacon of hope for many Kenyans who are eager for economic opportunities. However, despite this ambitious vision, the Nyeka faced significant challenges that ultimately led to its downfall. One of the biggest hurdles was funding. The project struggled to secure adequate financial support from both public and private sectors. Which, which limited its ability to move from prototypes into mass production. Without sufficient investment, the dream of a Kenyan-made car remained just that, a dream. The initial enthusiasm began to wane as financial constraints became apparent.